Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Myra Salcedo uh, with UT Permian Basin, and this is for my English 1301 course online. Uh, the first paper is coming up, and people are panicking, but don't panic. Uh, the prompt could be more specific. It says you should have an intermediate draft to turn in. And uh, I believe it's three to five pages. And uh, it, it talks about having an intermediate, intermediate papers being a polished draft. Well, I am not going to worry about that because a draft to me, a first draft, is just that. Uh, if you can get words on paper for four pages that are coherent and talk about your literacy, your journey, uh, through literacy or languages, and uh, that that's great. Uh, you need three pages for the first draft, and that's down to the bottom of three pages. Don't send me an outline, and don't submit a page and a half, or like you don't know what you're going to write about yet, but you just need to sit down and think about a few things and just start writing. Don't perfect it. Don't stop. Uh, go back and make corrections, just get some ideas uh, typed up. So uh, the literacy autobiography, autobiography is how you became literate in a language or as a reader or a writer. I have put a student paper in there uh, by Catherine Smith, a former student of mine who uh, changed her major from chemistry to English after taking 1301 because she found her niche and her her paper is great to read. She talks about a pivotal moment on her journey to become a reader when she read The Hobbit for the first time and it changed her life and she got into a community of Renaissance people and people that like the same uh, kinds of books and costumes and Renaissance costumes and things like that and she found her place so you may not have anything like that uh, I'm leaving the life uh, without language inkshed discussion board open and uh, through the weekend through Tuesday the first draft I moved the date down extended the due date till Tuesday I believe it's the, uh, February 18th, and it'll be before midnight Tuesday. You will need to submit the draft in two places. Uh, one will be in the peer review, and one will be just paper one draft, and that's for me to read and give you feedback. And I will do my darndest to get it done so you have time to uh, work on the paper before uh, I think it's February tw 25th. Yeah, 25th. So dual credit grades, if you're a dual credit student, midterm grades are due the 25th. Um, the first draft paper in the peer review and the final draft, um, it, it will not impact your midterm grades. What it is impacting, impacting grades are... Um, the ink sheds, you might notice they're 20 points each. That's a good sign that you need to do the, do the ink sheds. And what's great about life without language is some people have already started writing their literacy autobiography. For example, if you're bilingual and you have another native language and you had to learn English, or vice versa, you went to another country and had to learn another language, you might relate to Eva Hoffman, who uh, it wrote about being coming from Poland to America uh, many years ago, and uh, what it was like for her to uh, almost to be bullied for uh, not speaking English. So you may relate to that. You may have good memories of a relative in your family reading books to you, 
with me was my aunt reading Winnie the Pooh. Uh, and uh, I was an avid reader. Uh, Nancy Drew books, mysteries, when I was in the fourth grade. And reading was a bigger deal back then. And now in the advance of technology, not so much. So if you read a book that has some meaning to you, like Divergent, Hunger Games, uh, Harry Potter series, something that really got you interested in reading that you couldn't wait to read the next book in a series, that would be a good thing to put in your paper. Now, I, ideally, you will have three things uh, in the paper. Background of your journey. You don't need to put, say what you did in every grade of school that you were in. You know, I, I was in uh, certain reading groups in the third grade or anything. You don't need to do like a history, just some background of your journey. If you can quote somebody, Eva Hoffman, Helen Keller, Frederick Douglass, or you can quote from a novel. That would be great. Bring the reader in to see what it was um, that you were reading that you related to. You don't, you're not required to have quotations, but it, it, for the best papers, there will be quotations, and you should start getting used to using them. And uh, so what you need is a background uh, about you. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, <coughs> I'm not advertising any soft drinks. And a pivotal moment when you knew you belonged to a community. Maybe it was you always spoke Spanish and you finally got a joke in English. Uh, maybe it was when you translated for somebody else. So you should have background information, a pivotal moment, uh, quotations would be really nice, and you could quote from a book or a movie. Don't use brainy quotes, not good. Uh, and if mo a movie made you want to read the book, that's, that's interesting too. So there's a lot of things you can use. It's uh, autobiography, which is about yourself and your journey and the next paper is interview with somebody who does writing on the job also uh, I extended due dates because people were, were getting all caught up with the ink sheds and you really need to have written life without language ink shed and also uh, those that um, peer-reviewed uh, Mr. Moreland's paper that it gives you a start on doing a peer review because here's the process for this paper February 18th you need to turn in three pages of a draft of your literacy autobiography in two places one is a draft paper draft one and that's for me to go over it and count it as turned in and give you feedback the second place is peer review now what happens with the peer review, it's got a different closing date on it, but you need to submit everything midnight the 18th. Reason being, on the 19th in the peer review box, Canvas, hoping that it fingers crossed, um, will assign you two students to peer review. If you don't submit a paper, Canvas will not assign you anything. And I can go in and try to find people and it becomes a chaotic mess because you have to email papers to each other. And so it's just good to get something in there. And with the peer reviews, be gentle. It's a first draft. And uh, give people constructive advice. Um, like you might want to add, expand this paragraph, make it more clear to the reader. Uh, it should have a main point to the paper. And uh, I'll look up the thesis statement and write something up on that that uh, Catherine Smith has. is in your modules where it says literacy narrative prompt. 
Uh, and below that, there's a student sample paper. That's what I want you to click on and look at before you do your paper. I'm going to be available to talk to people this weekend. If you want to call, text me first because I may be hobbling around on my broken ankle. I'm at 75%. I've been in rehab a lot this week, so I'm behind on getting to the ink shed. So I'm trying to do that today and just sitting here with an ice pack on my foot. So it's getting better. 75%. I'm almost walking. So don't panic about the first draft of the first paper. You will submit it the 18th. February 18th, which is Tuesday. On Wednesday next week, you will get two student papers to write peer reviews assigned to you. And then what you do is write it in that peer review discussion box, or write your peer reviews, and you have until the 22nd to finish that. And then the final draft is due February 25th. And I'm trying to figure out how to keep things from being too overwhelming. Uh, assignments uh, butting up against each other. So I am working on that. And especially for the book clubs, because I would really like to talk to each group with each book. And I may extend the date for that. So you uh, will have your second paper coming up and the book club. But I'm working with everybody. And uh, I know it's a challenging course. There's a lot in it. Um, state requirements for online courses are pretty rigorous. And there's just certain things we have to, we're required to have in the course. And it's a lot. Uh, I know that, but don't worry because everybody's in the same boat. And, you know, I'm here too. Um, so we'll get through this together. And if you have questions about a topic for your literacy autobiography, don't sweat the prompt that's in there. It's a little bit vague. So I, I just told you, you know, a pivotal moment, quotes, and your background. And that could get you to three pages. So don't sweat it out and get started. Uh, even though it's not due this weekend, put an hour or so aside to get started. And also start reading your uh, novels for the book club. Uh, everybody should be maybe 50 pages in by a f in a couple weeks. And I will do group conferences and get groups together and talk about the book. Okay, so that's a, enough for this video. It's going long. And uh, don't panic. There's nothing to do this weekend. You have this weekend to get words on paper and till Tuesday night to get three pages. You can do it. And some of you can just take what you've already written in your life uh, without language, just ink sheds, and go ahead and use what you've already written. This, that's fair, that's fine. That's what that ink sheds for, to try to get you started. So I will see you at the next video.